Hi guys, this is Simeon. Welcome to the Swedish Homestead channel. I'm standing here inside of our house in front of this shelf that I built and put into this window where we are starting some of our vegetables early in the season. It's still cold outside and freezing temperatures. We actually get freezing all the way into June, at, um, in some years at least. And um, I wanted to show you today how it's going with my soil blocker and um, we're gonna put some more of the plants into some new soil blocks now and I hope you find this interesting. So here you can see some of the soil blocks we made. Put some tomato plants in there. Um, here we have put some jalapeno seeds directly on top of the soil blocks, just covered it with some plastic so they stay moist. And here are some more. Here we have some celery. And up there we have some more uh, bell pepper plants and some more tomato plants. We started the tomato plants on these trays here, directly in the soil, and I have some thoughts to share with that as well. But now it's time for us to take them out of there and plant them in these soil blocks. Now here you see, um, I made this wooden tray out of some old plywood that I found on the farm, and it fits exactly four soil blocks, and then we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, so four times 18, and those, fit exactly um, here on the shelf. It only took me about five minutes to fill this tray with all the soil blocks and we have already saved a ton of money um, when we purchased the soil blocker because all these individual plastic cups, if you want to get good ones that last a few seasons, they're expensive. If you buy cheap ones, you have to buy them every season. We have already um, paid for the soil blocker, so we're really, really happy with that. I've actually ordered um, one more that makes these smaller soil blocks. I'm gonna share about that now in a second. This worked okay, starting the tomato plants in here. This is probably more worth it with the celery, like I just showed you in the video. But these bigger seeds, like tomatoes, you're actually able to separate them and put them individually um, somewhere. So that I would actually next time do directly into these soil blocks, because this takes a lot of time to get the roots out and then every time you do that you damage some of the roots and you um, you weaken the plant and, and so next time we're just going to do that directly into these soil blocks which will be much much better but um, for example for the leeks I'm going to use the smaller soil blocks and I'm going to start you know not to waste the whole soil block we started some kale upstairs to dry it out and then uh, many of the seeds didn't germinate and then you have a whole soil block where nothing happened. Maybe you could reuse it or toss it back, but it's just waste of space. So I ordered this press um, for these little soil blocks. These are 50 by 50 millimeters. The little ones are 17 by 17 millimeters. And then you can actually, for this soil blocker that we have, I can actually make a square space here where you can just drop these little soil blocks in there and just transplant without disturbing the plant. So that's gonna be great. Uh, we're gonna do that and then with the you you fit so many more you know each soil block here you would fit four, fit four little ones here much more space efficient we can start salad plants and all of that there and then um, you don't waste so much space if they don't start uh, so I'm really looking forward to that I already love the system and it's all for us about with the commercial use um, that it goes quickly and efficiently and this I can tell you this takes a lot of time to plant these in these holes here and to um, to do that and then you damage the plants so I'm still glad I have this I'm still glad I have the soil blocker but it's going to be much more efficient to from the beginning start these tomato plants in the little soil blocks put them in now since we don't have a greenhouse yet or um, just as area that's warmed up where we can start these seedlings we have to do it here in our house sometimes it gets too hot here with the wood stove and the Sun coming in so these plants they grow fairly tall and skinny sometimes so I want to try to put them in these soil blocks as deep as possible 
and these holes here they're just 20 millimeters and I'm gonna take this nail here and just make them deeper and then I'm gonna put these plants in as far as you can because tomato plants as you know they actually uh, you can put the stem into the soil and they start to shoot new roots. So I'm just going to demonstrate one plant for you guys here. Just making a little deeper hole here. And then I'm going to get this out uh, carefully with the nail. Damage as few, as little of the roots as possible. And try to get the soil off because otherwise I won't fit it um, into, into the hole obviously. But here you see uh, the plants are not too bad, they grew a little tall here, um, but but it's okay. Make this hole here, and then I'll put them in as far as I can. There you go. They will lay down, and after a day or something, they will actually stand back up, and then we can take um, small wooden sticks to actually help them stand up. And later, when it's warmer outside, we will have them... Um, go outside during the warm hours of the day, put them back inside in the evening. So this is how I have it now and then I just really make it wet here. The soil blocks were freshly made so they are wet. So that's uh, that's fine but this is how we do it and it takes a little while you know to fill this and you might think oh that doesn't take too much time and if, if you do it as a hobby person that's completely fine but if we do thousands of these in the future with different plants even we are gonna plant straight into these soil blocks and then you know um, when you press these there is a 20 millimeter dent here you can buy these pins or teeth that they only make a little grove um, or like I said the square that blocks it out so that the little soil blocks fit straight in it then there's a big one where these soil blocks fit in and, and for the tomato plants, that'll definitely be good. But I think I'll build one of those because they're a little more spendy. These are fairly cheap. I'm, I'll try to build one of those big soil blockers myself. We'll see how that goes. I hope you just enjoyed seeing how we do it and, and just already the um, thoughts that I have about this. We're really fascinated with the system. We're definitely gonna continue with it. Uh, just wanna share real quick also that there were some thoughts about um, you know if this is just a trend on YouTube right now or not and um, the soil blocking has been going on for many decades um, and professional have used it. I, I believe that it's probably becoming a bit trendy now among private hobby people but um, professionals have always used this um, for a long time and, and there's you know from what I've learned so far soil blocks or plastic cups where the roots circle that can make the difference between a plant that can resist um, pests or not and so we're really excited about this obviously there are many more factors that come into place there um, but we're really excited about this and um, you know trendy or not this works for us and it works great and I love not having the silly plastic and not having to spend money. We have the salt blocker, it'll last for a long time. So thanks for watching. We'll have to get a bunch of work done today. Spring is approaching. I'll have more videos on that and how all of this is starting to kick in now. All the work. I hope you enjoy this. And I can't wait to show you guys everything outside when it'll start to grow. We're still about six to eight weeks away from that. But we're excited. So thanks for watching. Have a good day and a good weekend. Bye-bye.